Samoa is lotus land. In the lush warmth of its tropical climate, tempered by the coolness of tall volcanic hills, food grows abundantly. Samoans live naturally and easily, crowding outbursts of necessary work into effort between dawn and the heat of the mid-morning sun. Materials lie close at hand. While women plait baskets from the ubiquitous palm fronds, men husk the nuts, ready for carrying back to the village. Deceptive speed that reveals little of the skill and effort involved, the meat of the nuts is stripped out. Sun dried, the interior of millions of coconuts becomes the copra of commerce, and in Samoa, provides a major part of the capital to be expended on the intense village rivalries of church building. near, the drums call the able-bodied men to work on the church. Polynesian plasterers, bricklayers, carpenters, glaziers, and just plain workmen. Chiefly architect directs operations in person, carrying plans, elevations, structural and decorative details in his head. Along with the work, there is time too for singing and dancing. Back of the primitive, idyllic, tropical village life is the structure of the white man's economics, acting now as a buffer, now as a catalyst between Western and Polynesian cultures. On the reparation estates operated by the New Zealand government run 9,000 head of beef cattle, supplying most of the meat consumed in the territory.
From the reparation estate plantations and through their treatment plants flows a good deal of the territory's rich output of copra. Cocoa, heavily and expensively in demand on the world's markets, starts its journey to the breakfast table and the chocolate box from these well-tended groves and from the backyard cocoa trees of the villagers. Coconuts here go whole to the factory set up by the government to process the fruit into desiccated coconut, to trim and flavor cakes and confectionery all around the world. Into Apia, capital and only town of Western Samoa, flows all the commerce of the islands. When a ship is in the roadstead, Apia is as busy as a beehive. While the lighters fetch and carry across the smooth water, Apia turns a sunny front to the visitor, offering all the enchantment of the tropics. Against boat day, patient Samoan hands have been shaping tortoiseshell and coral ornaments, to be bought or not bought as the visitor wishes, but available if they're wanted. <laughs> Behind the town stands Mount Vaia, hilltop resting place of Robert Louis Stevenson, object of a thousand quiet pilgrimages, which by its loneliness never fails to still the tourist chatter. From Vaia, beneath and across the dense jungle, can be seen Vailima, once Stevenson's home, and residence now and for many years of successive European administrators. Here at administrative headquarters on Apia's waterfront, the High Commissioner pays tribute to local custom by taking a bowl of kava before settling down to the day's work. Especially important here, as on all tropical islands, is the medical service. To a people not yet convinced of the existence of enemies that cannot be seen by the naked eye, the government brings modern preventative medicine and hygiene to fight yaws, hookworm and tuberculosis. In the well-run central hospital, the future is looked to as carefully as the present. Samoan girls receive nursing training from a qualified European staff. A dental service at the hospital, staffed and operated by Samoans, provides relief and treatment as required. Samoan medical practitioners carry preventative medicine into the most distant villages guarding young and old against the scourge of yours. In 
addition to the village schools with their resident Samoan teacher, the government and the churches support a number of boarding schools in Apia. High on the list of sports in and out of school is cricket, in a special Samoan version, with unlimited numbers to each team, balls made from Samoan rubber, and bats designed to give full play to the wide open Samoan style of batting. Easily but inexorably, the age-long domestic routine goes on. Breadfruit, a very important part of Samoan diet, is planted conveniently close to the houses, providing in each tree shade, decoration and food. Bananas, for local consumption and for export, are grown extensively and along with the pawpaw or mummy apple make a useful addition to food supplies. Outstanding in the Samoan diet is the taro, pronounced here with the L as talo. The carefully tended beds of talo, placed wherever moisture and soil are right, are prominent in the Samoan landscape. The root is the main source of food in the talo plant, but the leaves also make a useful green vegetable. In Samoa, fire is also made in the age-old way. Not because matches are unavailable, but because this is the Samoan way, and the materials are always at hand. Here too, the stone or earth oven is still the commonest, most used and best liked method of cooking. Piped water supplies and village or household taps begin nowadays to take the place of the stream and the well. But for most Samoans, water still comes up the old way, guarded by a strict rule that only the dipper should go to the well and the container remain at a respectful distance. Though churches may be built of European materials, houses remain traditional. Men of the ancient builders' guilds put the utmost of craftsmanship into the intricacies of roof structure. For the roof in Samoa is the house, in this gentle climate where no walls are needed but a palm leaf curtain. Easily, unhurried, 
the Samoan people live out their lives, secure behind a still unbroken front of Samoan tradition and custom, buttressed against the shocks of intruding Western culture by unshaken belief that Samoa remains, as Samoa always has been to them, the center of the universe. <laughs>